All right, right, welcome. We are going to be talking about. <laughs> Look, <I'm... laughs> We're going to be talking about Google ads for real estate agents. If you're a realtor or agent and uh, you want to see what's working right now here in 2022, as far as creating Google ad campaigns to grow your real estate practice, then you're going to really like this video. Uh, this is the first episode of something Ryan and I are uh, are kicking off that we're we're uh, referring to as real estate test dummies. Uh, we are we are going to play the role of uh, test dummies for you with uh, different marketing campaigns, ideas, etc., and just share those results, good, bad, or ugly, right? Whether we uh, whether we crash and burn, or we uh, you know we we find uh, the the you know, the right way or, or the safe way to uh, to grow our practice. And today, what we're going to dig into is Ryan is going to share an example of a Google ad, a Google pay-per-click ad campaign that is working really well to generate real estate leads and grow uh, a database for uh, a broker that he is working with in Florida. And then we're actually going to build one in my account using the same best practices and the same premise. And what we're going to do is turn this into a tutorial for those that are interested in. And so uh, if you're watching this live, be a little patient. Uh, when we have that tutorial ready, you can get free access to it. And we'll just put information on how you can do that below this video, either in a description or if you're watching this on our, on our site to be built. Uh, we'll turn that into a manual, essentially, with step-by-step, click-by-click instructions, screenshots, et cetera, so that you can utilize uh, this to grow your real estate business. So without further ado, let's uh, let's dig in. Let's check out what's working for uh, Google Ads in the real estate world um, and uh, example campaigns and, and how we can replicate them. Yep. Just give me one second to bring up the right screen here all right that should be the right screen okay you see right, some google ads it. up there josh to be able yep. to add it to the stream there we go beautiful look at that all right so yeah this is a campaign um that has been running for oh it might be 18 months now um oh, it's wow. always nice, okay yeah it's always nice to have data uh and the reason this campaign is running is because the the broker where I have my license at Forever Florida Real Estate has told me not to keep, she keeps telling me don't turn that off because she likes the quality of the leads because we always get that question like what conversion yeah. rates will, will, will I get, what leads and the answer to that Josh is always well that depends on what you do to follow up um, and I'm sure we'll talk more about conversion type stuff in this series um, but this particular ad generates kind of a high intent lead um, somebody who is actively searching for real estate in our market, and it that we have generated. I'll just jump right into the numbers. We have generated 1,272 leads in 18 months, and the overall lead cost has been eight dollars and thirty six per lead. So this is bananas. So yeah. ten thousand clicks, an incredible click through rate. Yeah, a very low cost. Uh, cost per click, average cost per click, and Dollar. almost a hundred leads per month. And the, you know, the the difference here with this versus other potential platforms using Google pay per click ads is there's higher intent. People are actually, you know, they're going on to Google and searching for what we're offering. You know, what you're offering there, which is why, as you mentioned, why who you've set this up for wants them to keep, you know, keep running. Um, and I would imagine that uh, there's some great conversations going on and, and yeah. I would have, you know, I don't know what the and numbers closes. are, but I'm right. That's what I was just going to yeah, say. We're I'm, 10 I'm grand sure in. There are transactions for sure. We're 10 grand in. So we wouldn't be spending the money if, if yeah. it wasn't returning at this point. Totally. Um, Totally. Yeah, and I think I think as you're saying, it, it is good at this point just for people who don't know. I know most people know what Google Pay Per Click is, but I just kind of did it on the screen. Somebody types the keyword in; they explicitly want St. Pete, Florida real estate, and then you show up in the results here. As you can see, Realtor.com, Zillow—they kind of own this. 
Um, and But Josh, I think as the market turns here, as we see a little bit of a shift, you're going to have even less competition from other agents in your market. You can see here, I don't see one actual real estate agent running a Google ad on this page right now. That's wild, especially it, it, in a market like St. Pete. I mean, that yeah. seems crazy. Yeah, it always, it always kind of it astounds me a little bit. And I think the reason is that it, it is the conversion side of thing. I think a lot of people try this stuff, but they don't get the conversion, so they give up. You know. Right. And it's predictable, as you said, as the market shifts, it, it, the riffraff goes out, people get scared, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas this is the, the opportunity to double down and grow your market share if you do it strategically, like how we're going to show you to build a, a campaign like this um, yeah. here today. So yeah. So the idea here is somebody is searching high intent from real estate in your area. They see an ad like this. I have my two variations here, basically split testing, right? Yep. The ad copy. Um, and, uh, I'm going to just kind of point out a few of the main things. I have a template that I kind of operate with. Um, and it is to pull out a made a, an overriding niche, uh, property search. Uh, you and I over the years have talked about this a ton. So new construction, right. fixer uppers, uh, golf homes, whatever the kind of property list that you're going to come up with. So I say that first in my ad copy. Uh, then I like to put numbers in the ad if I can. Uh, yep. So hundreds of homes and condos and then priced from the low 200s. Um, and uh, actually <laughs> where the market went, this got a little outdated now that I look at it. Uh, and we do get blowback every now and then because 18 months ago, you, you probably could find something. Now you can't find anything. It's probably the low 300s. But the ad Right. That's what I was just going to say. I mean, yeah. it's it, not a huge deal, but but yeah, might yeah. might be. Might be a pack. So the, the point is, though, that you have a a formula to this, yeah. like that you have a process for it and, and, and a template, for lack of a better term, that, that people can model uh, niche focus using numbers. Yeah. Right. Because numbers always, you know, that grabs people uh, attention and, and seem to perform well. Um, and in this case, the, the idea of priced from. And, and starting at the low end of the market. So giving people an idea of, you know, wh where where they can expect to see those numbers start at. Yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah. And then the little bit of kind of sec extra secret sauce here is that I am not running this to keywords related to the niche. So say that again. So if we are not running this ad to people searching St. Pete, Florida, new construction explicitly. Right. Okay. Okay. Which is longer tail, right? There's more words in that because the volume of traffic on that will be low. What we're, what we're doing though, is we're running it to just, how many do I have in here? I have 24 total, but we're only running it at the main uh, short tail, right? The, the, the big traffic keywords in the area. Okay. But when somebody searches that, so they're searching uh, St. Pete condos for sale. The reason we're getting such a high CTR is because we're lumped in with this unique offer for new construction homes, something specific among all these generalists. Right. This is genius. And I want to illustrate that if, if you don't understand Google pay per click and, and, and Google ads, usually or, or in the past to make this work, You've got to have campaigns where you're targeting like hundreds of keyword variations and all this stuff. And it can get very confusing and complicated. You've broken this down into a very or a much more simplified way of building a campaign, which 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 alone is genius. But when you layer on the fact that it's also working like crazy, even though you're you've got this let's call it dummied down, uh, you know, the real estate test dummies yeah. uh, um, uh, concept. Even though it's dummied down, it's still performing extremely well because of the, the strategy and, and so forth. Um, and so I, I love this. Uh, th this is, yeah. you know, th th this makes it something that the, the, you know, the regular, the regular real estate agent could replicate, right? You don't need oh, some yeah. sort of super specialized knowledge or skill or uh, things of that nature. Yeah, it works pretty much in any market I try it in. It's a niche offer, but we're running it to all the traffic on Google, basically. These, yep. And, you know, a lot of people go nuts. When I started this, I think I, I had like three keywords in here. And then I've slowly added more in. Yeah. But you you really only need, in your case, you probably only need a NOLA PA real estate or a NOLA PA homes. 
And it, unless your budget's like more than 50 or a hundred dollars a day, there's plenty of traffic there. And, and that's the best traffic. Like somebody right. searching for homes in your market, but sure. then you, they see Josh's ad with, you know, offering a list of starter homes in a specific subdivision or something. And, and it, it stands, it kind of functions as a pattern interrupt among all the other ads in the yep. screen. Yeah. yeah. So, well, I mean, it's funny that you mentioned, I, I would love, I, I think we're going to, I think the next step we is we're going to, we're going to build and, and I would like to build it around new construction. Um, mm -hmm. we, we've got a lot of new construction going on in Mechanicsburg, which is probably the first one that I would start with. Um, yeah. and so that, I think that would make a lot of sense. Um, and those builders are going to get desperate. That's a good niche to be in now. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and it's funny that you say that because I've started to notice uh, two things that I haven't seen in quite a while when the market was crazy. Number one is new construction price reductions. Um, we've started to see those, whereas we were only ever seeing them increasing the prices. We've actually yeah. seen reductions happening and incentives. We haven't seen incentives um, and actually a third one, quick move, uh, quick move uh, options. Those neither of those three things had been really at all, <laughs> um, you know, available in the market or that, that I had been seeing in our market for quite a while. And uh, so, yeah, I think it's a, a perfect opportunity. As one of my favorite things about new construction, too, is is just half the time you can just send your buyer there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Register. Yeah. <laughs> And the home inspections are generally not very painful. I mean, there's always yeah. stuff that comes up, but yeah. Yeah. Um, hey, so, uh, so Michael, we're going to dig into this. I just want to, I just want to, hey, Michael, we're going to get to your question. We're going to build the campaign and then we'll get to your question. Uh, you know, how do we sift and sort out, uh, you know, the ones that are more motivated now versus, you know, what, what do we do long-term? Yeah. We'll definitely get into that. But first I want to, I want to focus on actually building out a Google ad pay-per-click campaign so yeah. people can see the steps of that and then we'll we'll, we'll di dive a little bit into anyway um what do we do once we get those leads starting to flow in to uh you know to identify the lowest hanging fruit versus the ones that need a little bit more nurturing or uh yeah yeah and compare and we'll say it again compared to facebook these are by nature by their nature more motivated and for sure yeah. no question and, you know, so you're spending a little more. Uh, I would argue that $8 is not bad, but you're spending a little more. That is not bad at all, especially, yeah. I'm sure, in your market, you know, it's a competitive market, St. Pete. Yeah, I mean, most, well, I think we're averaging, you know, we're in the 400K range on for average transactions yeah. in the office. So, yeah. you know, you do, you do a, even at this $10,000, I mean, we need to do one deal out of, you know, call it two deals out of how many leads that was it? I forget, uh, conversion, 1,200. 12, yeah. I mean, that's incredible. So you could, yeah. you could convert 0.3% and still be significantly ROI. You know, I mean, the numbers are in your favor. Uh, and if you convert 3% over 12 months, then it's just, I mean, it's, yeah. it, it's and a greater ROI than you can get in any investment ever and ever. Like if you thought of yourself as, you know, an investor, you would, you would be knocking the socks off of Warren Buffett. Uh, every single day of the week. But unfortunately, most real estate agents don't look at it that way. But if they did or do, I mean, it's a, it can be a game changer for how you approach things like like building a, a Google. Well, most uh, generate the 50 leads in the first month or two and then and then stop because there wasn't a closing yet. Yeah. Um, so and that's what I'm saying, guys. Like you almost need to go into this saying, I'm going to run this campaign for six months and I'm going to spend $5,000. But uh, going back to the investment analogy, though, like we're told you got to take a certain amount and sock it away every month and dollar cost average and blah, blah, blah. And eventually that's going to grow and, and, and get you a return on investment over time. If you take that same approach here, the beautiful thing is four, five, you know, in month four, five, six, seven, eight, you're going to start getting these massive returns on your cash. Um, but you just have to be a little bit patient, right? Yep. A little bit patient. And uh, and think about more of the long the long term, uh, and uh, yeah, and we're playing the long game. So let's let's build this thing, Josh. I'm gonna talk a little fast as usual, so you have to slow me down. Um, yeah, 
but but it's, it's probably about a 20 minute flow from start to back as I build this. And if you guys, if I move too fast, remember, you can always come back and just kind of watch the replay and slow us down on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you are. Yep. Um, the, the first place I'm going to start is this landing page. This is where I'm sending traffic. And okay. I tested sending to this landing page, which you might recognize as a KV core landing page um, versus the list of properties from a KV core website. Uh -huh. And this only slightly beat out the list of properties. The, so the squeeze link where you, you know, you build it in the back end of KV core. So yep. where we're always going to start is where are we driving the traffic? I would recommend using a page like this because they seem to work well and you can build these really quickly with KV core. So Josh, what I forget, what's your website at, uh, on KV core? What's the URL? Uh, Hamden here. I may have to Hamden H A M P, uh, yeah, there's a P D E N township living.com. Okay. And then uh, oh, they're doing this little thing. And then I'm going to skip guys. Cause I don't know that everybody here has KV core, but I'm going to skip the part where you go into the KV core back end and you go to the landing pages. You know, maybe we can do that in other webinars, uh, but I'm just going to go to this, this, I have a cheat link s slash create that I can start oh, building this out. I didn't even know. Yeah. Fancy. Yeah. So, so and, and I, want, I want to clarify one thing you said. So this is what we're building is a what you would at least in KV core language is a is a landing page. Now, for years, we yeah. used to call this a squeeze page. Yeah. But the point is, your experience says it's better to send people to a page where there's one decision to be made. Do I want this information or not versus sending them to the actual listings, right? Sending them to a page which in KV core language is an IDX squeeze page where they can, they can start looking and then there's forced registration. So let's actually, let's show that because we are going to need the link anyway, as we build our landing okay. page, we're going to need the list of properties that we send people to. Yep. Um, so Josh, are we doing in like a, a, a county? I know that you have some small towns. Do you think the ad would be better in your market to say all of XYZ County or a specific township? Um, I think, Let's just, just for the sake of this, let's do Mechanicsburg. Okay. Cause that's the bigger town. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So and it's, see. I mean, it's the one where, where we've got a good bit of new construction activity and it's close to all of those are close to me. Right. So I'm going to choose Mechanicsburg and then I'm going to do uh min year built. <clears throat> Actually, I think you can choose new homes. Yeah. Newly yep. built. Yeah, newly you built. Yep. Homes. Yep. And then I'll just apply my filters here. And I'll generate my list. And then you can actually, well, this is looking a little different. I haven't looked at this in a while. Um, I want to sort this. Oops. I'm going to sort it by price so we have that data to use yeah. on the landing page and in the ad, right? Like yeah, what's so the lowest price and what's the highest price? Yeah, and I need to actually change the filter here. I I had uh, rentals cho chosen, which is a little bit of a problem. So I'm gonna, gotcha. Uh, there we go. So uh, if we sort from low to high, the low end is in the mid three hundreds. We don't need it to be exact because listings will change. You know. Yeah. Uh, and then and the high end, you're you're up over a million five. So yep. over a million. So, um, and so I just kind of need to know that for when I put the numbers in my ad, and then I'm just gonna sort this way, and I'm gonna copy. The URL here. Now in KB Core, you can build this link in the squeeze link section that you're redirecting to. And the point we were making earlier is that if you want, you could just drive your ad traffic straight here. Yeah. And it, as long as you're using the list view, you see how it says list and not the map. Um, you can expect about a 10.5% conversion rate. They, they work okay. for whatever so, reason. So, and, and the ad example that you showed us was yep. getting about that conversion rate. In other words, for those, you know, just so you understand, that means every 10 clicks, you're going to get about one, 10 to one yep. that will register. So if you're getting, you know, if you're getting clicks for a buck, like this example here, you're going to be, you know, eight, nine, 10 bucks per lead. Um, yeah, the land. So I, the 10.5 number is on the, if you drive to the list of properties, what I figured out is I can shave a percentage add a percent or two on the conversion side, which is why we shaved it under $10 by using a landing page. Yeah. And for the reasons you mentioned before, where there's less choice and it's kind of a more direct uh, poop or get off the pot kind of offer. 
Um, so here's a question that some some that might be a little bit more sophisticated may be wondering. There was a time where you couldn't really drive traffic from a Google pay per click ad to a landing page like this, but it mm -hmm. seems like that's no longer problematic. Yeah, they've they've re you know you you're you're uh, you're showing your age, Josh. Um, but back in the early 2010s, Google used to give uh, uh, people a really hard time about like thin landers, they called them, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, as far as I can tell, as long as you have the terms of use and the privacy policy on here, and as long as they can go to your main homepage and see that it's a legit business, you're okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, yeah, but for a while I was of the same mind. Like I can't really try these. And then I started trying them and they worked. Um, yeah. So Mechanicsburg PA, and I just want to use what was working here. So new construction yeah, homes absolutely. and condos. Listen, copy and paste. Yep. Um, homes and condos. Reinvent the wheel. And Josh, what I'm doing here to keep the scent trail, right, is you'll notice the headline and then the subheadline are pretty much mirroring what was in the ad copy. And, and Without, when Ryan says the, the scent trail, you, you want the, the whole process to be as congruent as possible. You don't want to throw people off the scent. Right. Yeah. And, and to give you an extreme example, if the ad said Mechanicsburg PA new construction homes and condos, and we send them to a landing page that says, you know, uh, Mechanicsburg PA, PA 55 plus active adult communities, like that doesn't make sense. And, and people are like, whoa, 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 I'm in the wrong place. They click back and now you've lost them. You want to make it, you know, you want to keep them on the scent, right? You want to keep it congruent the whole way through the process. Yep. So here's one of my favorite tricks here underneath. Um, is I'm giving a reason why. And I don't know if you can require a phone with KV Core Landers. I recommend against it because you get a lot of fake phone numbers. Yep. And what we're really going for here is we just want a lot of email addresses so we can incubate them over time. But my call to action underneath is if you enter your cell number, we'll text you any special builder incentives and deals we learn about. Uh, no more than one text per week. You can reply stop at any time if you don't like what we're sending. So Josh, what I'm, what I'm doing there, of course, is giving them a reason why they're going to give me their cell number. Um, I'll be honest, I've never once sent a special builder for people because <laughs> I forgot I did this, right? Yeah. Uh, and it's a well, that'll be part of our follow-up because that does work yeah. when you yeah. actually do that stuff. It, it will get you in uh, engaged in more conversations. And that's a big thing that we talk about on Texting Tuesdays, which is a live session that I do every Tuesday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern. Yeah. So, And then I, I say, hey, if you give me your cell number, here's sort of the risk reversal, right? right. Uh, you know, I'm not going to text you more than once a week, and, and you can reply stop at any time. So it's kind of like I'm selling the idea of why they should give me the number so that when I do get a phone number, it's going to be accurate. It's going to be yeah. accurate, and it tells you this person has more intent. It's it's a natural – it's it's a built-in – um, um, like filtering option for you. Like if you go and look at the ones that provided phone numbers, they're probably a little bit more serious and a little bit farther down the pipeline or down the, the, the funnel in the process. Yep. So I'm just copying what I did. We're just modeling what's working. The background I believe is, it's not the new construction, even though I think this one would work, but let's just go with the one that I'm using on my page since it's yeah, working sure. so well. Yeah. So I just picked the the stock background. It looks like a nice new house. Um, yep. and, and realistically, you hardly see this because most of the traffic is going to be mobile. Yep. Like that. So I think we're good. The only other step I have up top here is to put our URL in here, right, to the list of properties. Right. That so that, gonna... what we're doing now is the where people will go after they opt in for yep. the list, which is why Ryan had created that uh, that list of you know that the, the the search results the curated list of new construction homes in mechanicsburg on the search site yeah and one other thing i kind of went over quickly there i have the new construction hashtag is that an okay hashtag for you will it confuse anything else you're doing um can you do new construction uh let's do um mechanicsburg. yeah just add mechanicsburg at the end and this is very important kb core because you're going to trigger your automations based on this trigger your automations and also allow you to search by that filter. So for things like sending a text message with a special incentive or a quick move option or a price reduction on a property, all of which are great follow-up 
ideas and ways that you can get a higher percentage of the leads, you know, as, as clients for, for your business. Uh, that's a quick and easy way that you can do that is, is uh, filtering by the hashtag. Yep. So I made it nuke mechanicsburg. I, I had a hunch that that other one might be too long or it felt long. So yeah, that's fine. All right. So I'm going to hit save. And then we've got our URL here, which is important. We're going to need that. And I always keep my kind of like a scratch pad here. So now we can get to the fun stuff and we're going to run this ad. I think Josh on a separate ses session or, you know, you can do it with your team or whatever. We should show what happens once the lead gets in, but I think that's for next week or, or in the future. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This I want to focus on more creating the ad campaign to start getting the activity, to get people clicking and opting in. And absolutely, we can dive deeper on and we'll probably even include the example smart campaign which is what KB Core calls the, the follow-up sequence, the automated follow-up sequence, what that yeah. looks like. But here's the simplest way you can do it is just set people up to get new listings in Mechanicsburg uh, that are new construction and occasionally send cool stuff like a tour yeah. of a new construction home, a special incentive, a quick move option, price reduced, et cetera. Yep. Yeah, that's the... Um... The reason I bring that up is because you don't want to start driving traffic if you don't have your follow up in place. Right. You end up wasting. Or at least have a plan for it. Yeah. Okay. So now we get to have fun. Let's go run this ad. Let me go into your account. I'm going to click uh, new campaign, this big blue button here. Uh, I will mention if you just created a Google account, it might look a little different than this. There's Google takes you through the simplified mode, and then there's this a view that's more like expert mode and I'm yeah. not re remembering it. I I'm operating in the more expert looking view of things. Um, so going back, new campaign, and then I'm just going to choose the create a campaign without a goals guidance right here. Okay. And then I'm going to choose search, which is really important. So choose search. By the way, we are, this is, the part we're at now, A, you, you, you can you can slow it down, you can forward, rewind, and we're also going to tur turn this into a manual that we're going to give you for free, which once it's ready and created, you'll find information below this video, either in the description or uh, you know wherever you're watching it, the associated documentation with this, there'll be a way for you to access that. Yeah. And, you know, one thing we're skipping over, Josh, is there is a whole set of actions you need to take to make sure your conversion pixels are installed. Correct. In, in, um, so we'll, we'll add that with the manual. You, you yes, can see here what's 100%. popping up. Yeah. It says like submit lead forms. Well, for enable, for it, in order for uh, Google to know that a conversion happened at KV Core, uh, you need to kind of do this first. So I'm, yeah. it's already done. All right. Yeah. So let's hit continue. Uh, select the results. You know, I don't know you need to check all this, uh, these three. So I would just ignore those right there. We're going to call this uh, Annexburg New Construction, just so Josh knows what it is when he looks in his yep. dashboard. Uh, bidding, we're going to focus on conversions. So you'll leave this exactly how it is. And it says uh, this campaign will use maximized conversions bid strategy to help get the most. So that is exactly what you want to have. Um, now, it does require that you have those pixels installed and, and all that other stuff. And we'll make sure there's that supplemental info. So we'll hit yeah. next. Now, Josh, this I consider to be very, very important. These two boxes, in my opinion, are Google trying to squeeze more money out of you for lesser yep. quality traffic. Yep. So I uncheck those. They're basically so you saying, uncheck hey, both gonna... of those, just to clarify, you're going to uncheck both of those boxes. Yep. And you're, you're saying, hey, Google, I only want you to show my ad if somebody explicitly searches on Google.com for my terms. Otherwise, they're going to put it on other sites that they have partner deals with. Yeah, you got to be careful with Google, Facebook, Instagram. Like There, there are times where they are trying to um, recommend things that yeah. uh, really more benefit themselves than they do you. Yep. So now we get to the location section and you can go either way on this. Um, you can say, hey, I'd only like to show this ad in my market, right? So you might do like Harrisburg Metro, Josh, right? Right, uh, yeah. Do something like this. And that's 2 million people and that's fine. Uh, or you could say the whole United States. 
And if, if you do the whole United States, then what you're saying is that anybody who might be thinking of moving in um, can can see my ad. Yep. So, so what? How do you feel about that? I, I want I want the whole U.S. because uh, a for a couple of reasons. Number one, we have a uh, you know we have a Navy depot and and some some military folks that do move into the area from time to time. And yep. B Mechanicsburg, I think there are a couple of Mechanicsburgs in the country, but. As far as I can tell, Mechanicsburg, PA is the one that like people, not many people know, but like it would be unlikely that they're, you know, um, that they're searching for a different Mechanicsburg if they're on Google looking for Mechanicsburg homes for sale. Yeah, that's that's what you want to think about because it can it can get easy for Google to get confused. Right. So one important thing here, you see this location options. You're going to want to choose presence, people in or regularly in. Otherwise, Google will say, oh, well, you chose United States. Now all the people in India who kind of like shown interest in something United States related, we'll show this ad to them too. Oh, sneaky Google. <laughs> sneaky yeah. Google. So it's not, it's not a huge deal, but it could cost you a little extra money. So best practice is just check that middle one on yep. your location options. Okay, so language, we'll leave it at English. If you are kind of in a multilingual, you know, you have a multilingual clientele, it might make sense for you. You can choose people who speak other languages, but we're going to stick with English here. Um, we're going to leave all this stuff kind of how it is. Let me click the more settings to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Yep. Uh, the ad rotation, prefer the best performing ads. You can always, if you want to show your ads evenly, you can do that here, Josh. But we're going to yep. let Google's algorithm just choose ad variations that work the best for us. Um, okay. So now keywords, this is where I see uh, real estate agents, especially just lose their minds and, and spend way too much time overthinking this. Um, and it, they want like, they're like, Oh, I need 300 keywords, every possible thing somebody's searching for. Um, uh, but the curve of, of what people are searching is mostly just related to homes and real estate in yep. your area. So, and the way we're differentiating is the offer, the actual keyword, the niching it down. And the way the formula he's Ryan's created for that is, is another way that we're addressing that in a, in a contrarian sort of way of the typical way of thinking about this. Yep. So see what I'm doing here, Josh, I'm dropping, I'm dropping this little bracket in. Yep. Which I know, you know what it is that that's, that's telling people that we only want people directly uh, searching these terms. They have to exactly type this in to see my ad. And that's called yeah. exact match with the with this little bracket. And I like to start my campaigns really strict on that with just a few keywords because this is going to be your highest quality search. It's just that guy searching for that. Yeah. If I put quotation marks around these, then I'm saying, all right, well, if somebody searches Mechanicsburg PA condos, you know, uh, condo, uh, average Mechanicsburg PA condo fees. Like you're doing some research for a school project or something, right? Yep. Yep. There's a chance that I pop up in the search. It's not a bad thing. And, and overall you get good numbers and I do gradually migrate to, to uh, phrase match. But if I can get enough traffic on just these three, basically homes, real estate and condos in your market, you probably have more townhomes than we have, right? Yes, definitely. Uh, people, so I'll do townhomes too. Uh, yep. uh, so you you might find that if you're working on a ten or twenty dollar a day budget, that there's just plenty here, and the quality is going to be pretty high. It's just people searching that stuff. Right. So and and this is where people look at me and go, well, that you're just being lazy. Like I need three hundred keywords, <laughs> but but you don't. Okay? Right. And I would say that like. I don't know. I, I, I've learned, especially in the age of fake news and everything else, like you should always question everything. And yep. we're, we're showing this is not this is not Ryan telling you or showing something theoretically. He's got tons of data to back this concept. Yeah. Um, I think part of this for me is borrowed from Perry Marshall. I've learned a lot about Google ads from him. So I'll just shout that reference out if you guys haven't heard him. Perry Marshall was kind of like the godfather of doing paid Google back in the day. Um, Perry likes to run, I think he runs broader campaigns and then he eventually looks for the terms that are getting keyword, getting a uh, search. He calls it uh, peel and stick. 
and he'll yep. so he'll run really broad and he'll say, oh, Mechanicsburg PA Homes is getting most of my traffic, and he'll create a second campaign with the exact match for that. Um, I'm kind of shortcutting that process of you having to buy that buy that data because we bought it here, you know, in the campaign that I was showing you earlier. Like we just we know that if you go after the the short tail, it's going to work for you. Yep. All right. All right. So our final URL. Well, that's pretty easy. That's going to be that landing page landing we generated. Page. Yep. Yep. So I'll grab that. And then now we get to write the ad copy. Now I'm just going to kind of model what I have here, even though I kind of haven't memorized, but I'm going to kind of reference over here. So we'll start in our first spot with Mechanicsburg new construction. Uh-oh. Ah. Oh. It worked out great. See that, Josh? Well, look at that. Could when you have a long city, when you have a yeah. long city name, um, and if it was too long, what I would have done if we had these thirty spots, I would have done new homes. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then our second line is going to be uh, hundreds of homes and condos. You see how I did waterfront and in town in the second version? Yes. Mm -hmm. That actually is performing better because waterfront's a hot button here. You, sure. it, it might not be where you are, right? Sure. So we'll stick to the uh, hundreds of homes and condos with the number. And and another way in my market that that might work would be single family and townhomes. I don't know, maybe. Let's do that. So I'm going to show you this family and townhomes. So this actual uh, ad that I'm creating was is being created differently than when I originally created this. Uh, because ex you see this expanded text ad no longer available. Mm. Uh, Google's kind of changed the way this works. So I'm going to explain that in detail here in a second. Uh, but let me just get the first three lines done. And then it is uh, priced from, right? That's our yep. next line. So priced from the mid threes, I think. Priced from the mid 300s. Okay. Um, See all listings now. Another one I use a lot is see all listings now or something. Mm -hmm. Search now. Mm -hmm. So what Google did was they kind of changed things so that you can put different phrases in and have them auto rotate them. And if I leave this as is, Google will just rotate these five phrases in all the different sections, the three different sections. You can kind of see that happening on the right side here. Mm -hmm. Every few seconds, it's kind of refreshing. You see that? Mm -hmm. And that could work well, but I don't really like it. I like to control the flow of what I'm saying in my ad. Okay. So what Google lets you do is you, you can hover over on the right side here. Oh, look at that. Can, you can click on this pin. Yep. And you say, I only want to show this phrase in position one. I only want this phrase to show in position two. So these next two, I'm only going to show in the second spot. And in my position three, price from the 300s, and then I have a call to action to see all those things now. Google's just basically going to rotate these two. Yeah. Very and cool. look for the best performing. Okay, so we're gonna go down here now to descriptions. Um, let's see what I, what did I have over here. Oops, oops. So it might be cool to. All right, that's gonna take me a second. I'm just gonna write it out. Basically, you're gonna want to say the same thing again, right? See, see hundreds of Mechanicsburg. Homes, condos, and townhomes for sale now. You could do search. Yep. And you do priced from uh, 300 from the mid 300s to 5 million plus. And again, I could use the thumbnail or I can just let it rotate. But that's more or less it right there not not hard that took about 10 minutes right five ten minutes right yeah and the first time you do it it may take longer and yeah. you know again we will have a manual together for you to help with this um but not not rocket science yeah yeah pretty easy and th and again this works pretty much wherever i go so whatever your niche is if it's not new construction and you focus on starter homes or you focus on uh golf homes you just substitute the new construction basically and and that's it. So I'm going to click next. Uh, oh, let me mention these site extensions. I very much dislike them, Josh. Uh, okay. 
So Google will say, oh, you, your ads aren't as prominent as they could be if you use site links. Uh, the theory being that it takes up more space. Um, I have a feeling that it just get it. The reason Google wants you to do it is because it makes them money and not you. Um, mm -hmm. What I don't like about them is you're kind of spreading the focus of your ad around. So if the person saw your main headline and they were searching for homes, but then they get distracted and they click on the zero commission program, how to sell for no commission, they yeah. might opt in for that. But you've just taken a click away from the main thing they were just searching. for. Right. Yeah. So, yep. So so you if you are going to use these, just be careful and keep them very tight and relevant to what you are doing. Um, I tend to just skip them, even though Google tells me it's a bad idea. And, and as you saw, the results are fine. So and then we'll set a budget. Um, you know, as you, uh, I would shoot for at least ten dollars a day, so you get at least one lead a day. W where do you want to be, Josh? Uh, let's go with twenty for now. A thousand sounds good, Josh. Twenty. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right. Yeah. So twenty is good. And on this, remember, you can always tweak them up and down. Um, right. Sometimes I'll start high because I'm impatient. I'll do a hundred a day just to get a baseline to learn, and then tweak it down. Or you can do it the opposite way. It really doesn't matter. Have you noticed? Like in Facebook, if you do that, yeah. that could be problematic. Is I, it the same issue on Google? If you, if you, you know, like you just said, the, the idea yeah. being just to get some feedback and some activity going, start real high and then back it down once you have some data and feedback. Is that? Uh, if you give them too big of a budget and the traffic's not available, what Facebook does, they try to spend all your money and then they right. get, the algorithm gets confused. Uh, I haven't seen that in Google. You might see it get you might see a day or two where like it's a little wonky, like they don't spend your whole budget or they spend too much. Um, but it seems to level out better in Facebook. Facebook, you can just totally kill a campaign that way, right? Right. Yeah. 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 So it's less riskier. So I'll hit publish. And just like that, Josh has a campaign that in theory, Josh, you might still be running this in three years, generating, you know, yeah. a handful of leads a week and that's it. It just kind of runs. Yep. That's the other beautiful thing about Google pay-per-click yeah. ads is when you got something that's working, you can really just let it go. Whereas with other platforms, that's not often the case. You will get to a point of diminishing returns where it just, you know, um, you, you've got to, you've got to keep changing up your copy, your images, you know, yeah. what you're offering. If you want them to continue to perform, that's not the case here. You know, it's, it can be, you know, it may take you a little bit of time to figure it out up front and to get the the numbers where you want them. But once you got it where you want it, it's uh, you know it can it can rock. You know, it, yeah, you can just let it rock and roll. Um, okay, so some comments and questions. Yep. Um, can you clarify that ROI? Michael was asking. Well, so for example. Ryan had pulled back up their St. Pete campaign, about $10,000, $10,600 in ad spend over, you said about 18 months. Yeah. It was the beginning of last year, like February of, of 21. Their average price is $400,000. So if they got one settlement, one closed transaction, it's pretty much break even. And anything over that, it, you're playing with house money, essentially. So and there's several ways to look at that. You could look at it as ROI infinity because you've, you've, you've paid it and now everything going beyond that is, is just gravy or you can calculate it on a rolling basis. There are lots of different ways that you can look at it. The point is, you know, two out of 1,200 leads is a horrifically low conversion rate and would still be at least two to one ROI over the lifespan of that. I uh, I used to log into Delia's account up until a few weeks ago when I left Inside Real Estate through the admin of, of Inside Real Estate. So I couldn't log in today to get you the exact numbers. Uh, but I can probably in the follow-up or next to the video tell you how many closings came from this. Now, results will vary. And, and this office, they have like an ISA who looks at every one of these leads and calls, you know, so mm -hmm. it's probably the best case. Um, yeah. The other thing I'll say about these in, in this environment is she hands a lot of leads out to realtors and we never, sometimes they don't know the source. The agent forgets who, what it was when he gave it back. Yeah. And they, well, they listen, the average is a half a percent. 
Yeah. That's the industry average. So that would be at least six. Yeah. If you're doing, and what we're doing, we're using KV Core to fullest where there's automated property alerts, there's a smart right. campaign, and we're a little weak on sending something every week, like builder deals and specials. That'll double your conversion rate, right? Yeah, um, totally. You know, so yeah, but I like the half a percent number. Uh, I have a feeling it's more, it's it's up there more in a, toward the percent number. So I, yeah. I would expect that this is probably done about a transaction a month on average, you know, yep. about 10 deals. Um, yep. I would not be surprised at all. Yeah. Uh, what are you playing, paying for click on average? What's the range? So if, in, in this example, the one yeah. is six and the one's four, So just over a dollar. Uh, but that will vary by market and, you know, by the niche that you, I mean, there are going to be some variations there. We you can't you know, flatly oh. guarantee that you're going to be at a bucket, a, a click. And Google rewards you over time. Right. So we might've been at a dollar 20 the first few months, but when they see a campaign's working and it's reliable, they, they reward you. Yeah. Um, and it's they can see all these cool. numbers because yep. Josh, just to continue on that, like they want their user experience for their people to be good. And when right. they're, when their pixels and their data that we've installed says, Hey, a whole 13% of people opt in for this offer. They want to show that ad more. Yep. Yeah. So um, Michael also said, um, I ran Google ads for 12 months and attracted a buyer that netted me a $10 million total sale. Yeah. That literally probably could pay for your ads for the rest <laughs> of your real estate career. Um, now, like, you know, it's all about perspective, I, I suppose. But that's a great example of playing the long game and being rewarded for it. Because if you had stopped after three months, you may not have gotten that client, right? That client may have came, uh, come in, in the fourth or fifth or sixth month. Um, so, you know, I, I think what's really important, whether it's Google pay-per-click to grow your real estate business or whatever, is playing the long game as long as you are using best practices, like what we showed today of people that are actually doing the stuff, right? It's not theory or hypothesis. And that you're 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 following up and following through, like and growing your database, right? Your database is the most valuable asset in your real estate business. Whether you're using Google Ads to grow that or whatever, like if you're growing your database on a daily basis, I think that's like the one um sort of process and result number that can have the biggest impact on your business, both short term and long term. Yep. And high intent. Google is high intent. Uh, another follow up from Michael. It took me several months to understand the way to do it, but this is very cool. Long tail keyword did the same thing uh, with blogging. So same idea with blogging, like playing. So if you if you are in a niche and your budget isn't high, you could you could do mechanics work PA new construction, exact or phrase match generate three leads a month, but only spend like $10 and have it be very focused and, and get similar results. So I like, you know, yeah. I, I just want to clarify that about the long tail keywords. I'm not saying it's bad, but if in this case, we want to generate leads for a bunch of agents, you want to get the short tail going. Yeah. Brendan, um, a great point here. There's no best way to start, get volume and figure it out. I do the same thing. Right. So, I mean, Ryan gave a set of best practices and this is a good place to start, but how your campaign, you know, the, the data and feedback you get in your market may be different than, than what we set up. If you, or when you implement this and you get some data, if you'd like some, that's great follow-up content for one of these, if you're open to doing that, we'd be happy to, uh, you know, take a look and, and maybe make some recommendations of what you might need to tweak or, 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 or add or take away or whatever. Uh, but this is a good set of best practices to start with to get a Google ad pay-per-click campaign set up and going um, and to generate some results and feedback. That's all you're looking for is feedback, good or bad. Like you can't, Ryan and I were talking about these sessions earlier and, and you know, how we want to structure them and do them. And we could talk about it all we want, but you can't steer a parked car, right? You got to get something moving. And then you can add some direction to it. You can tweak, you can course correct, et cetera. So, um, yeah. And, and with ad, with paid ads, you got to buy the data 
And I hope you right. guys, uh, you know, we bought some data here for you to help hopefully skip this. And I think that's what we're going to be trying to do with this test dummies project. Was just, Josh and I are just going to try things out and maybe save you some frustration or give you some ideas, you know, when things don't work, um, things to avoid. But then when things do work, you guys will be able to just model them. 100%. 100%. Yep. Uh, Brendan also says, I stay at about four bucks a day for myself per ad and generate 50 to 60 per month. I think that's 50 to 60 per, uh, leads per month. Yep. I don't know how many ads you're running at $4 a day to get to that. Uh, Brendan, I'm curious, what's your what's your approximate cost per lead or like average cost per lead? I would love to, uh, to know that as well. And we've been going for almost an hour here. So here's what, uh, as we come in for a landing, a few things as it relates to this. Number one, we will turn this into a manual. Um, if you were with us here live or watch the replay recently after, it may take us a few days. As soon as that's ready, we'll make it available in the description or below this video, wherever you're watching it. Um, and if you don't see it there, you can email mike at growwithjosh.com, mike at growwithjosh.com. And as soon as it's ready, He'll, he'll give you access. Uh, that's number one. Number two, uh, we will definitely do a follow-up after I have some data for the campaign that Ryan created yeah. and, and share. I mean, I think that would be a great uh, information. Uh, and let's and show your let's show your conversion flow too. Maybe we'll set that up in the next session. A hundred percent. So that's what we'll that's what we'll do. We'll do that whether it's next week or the following week to get some data. We'll talk about we'll we'll, we'll go over the early results and answer, you know, dive deeper into you know some of the questions that Michael had asked about, you know, the follow-up and, and the, the flow after you get a lead, you know, what, what are you doing and um, how are you, how are we following up with them to, to make sure that we, because here's the thing, you want to have your, your, your process in place to make sure that you, you don't miss out on any of the low hanging fruit, right? The folks that are most ready, willing, and able right now, uh, while also positioning yourself to catch that low hanging fruit once it's ready in the future, a month from now, three months, six months, nine months, 12 months. And, um, you know, I'll share, we'll, we'll share some specific to this campaign, but also some just general best practices around that, uh, you know, that type of concept and, and idea. Uh, Brendan's getting 78 cents a click on his campaigns. Good nice. on you, Brendan. That's good. Yeah. He's uh, beat me over there in Orlando. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Now I got to get to work. Right. So, <laughs> Ryan, thank you. This was great. Um, you know, Google Google pay per click ads uh, for real estate for dummies. Right. Yeah. Uh, for buy buy the real real estate test dummies. We'll put all that information together. If you have additional questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, you can comment below or you can email Mike at growwithjosh.com. And uh, I should have mentioned this at the beginning. Wherever you're watching this. Um, do us a huge favor, hit the like or, or the heart button. Um, turn on the notifications, whether you're watching on uh, on YouTube, hit the smash the bell to be notified, subscribe to the channel. Or if you're on Facebook, you can do the same. You can subscribe to be notified of, of live sessions. And I think you can do the same on LinkedIn because we're streaming them all over as well. That way you can be notified of new sessions like this. Ryan are going to be doing sessions like this a couple of times a week and, and just playing the pay part of real estate test dummies so uh, we can uh, we can get into all the crashes and yep. uh, and and save you some pain and agony uh, as you try to grow your uh, real estate practice. And Josh, I actually did fire up the domain real estate best test dummies. There's a there's a blank WordPress site sitting there right now today as we record this. But if you're watching later, we should have a site up there where you can uh, plug into our our uh, other stuff. There you go, real estate test dummies dot com. Uh, that's where we'll we'll be able to uh, to. Make note of all the resources, the recommended uh, um, services, the manuals that we're going to be uh, putting together for all of you and uh, ways that you can connect with us and, and get some help if you're interested. Good stuff. Right. Thanks. Thanks for watching, guys. See you. Thanks, Ryan.